Hey everybody, this is Kristen Brooks, certified CBD consultant and founder of the Healthy Not High movement, here to help you understand CBD and break the stigma through education. I've spent 15 years of my career interpreting clinical information and data in medical device and genomic cancer diagnostics. Let's bring you up to speed with CBD and 10 important things to know about starting on it. Human history is full of fads that actually benefited us in no way whatsoever. Fat-free food items, tanning beds, the cookie diet, artificial sweeteners, shake weights, diet drinks. But CBD is a trend that may be one of the most beneficial ever. I like to call it the molecule gaining momentum as a world-class healer. So put down your shake weight, take a sip of your diet drink, and let's cover 10 things to know about starting CBD. Number one, it's no longer accurate to say that CBD is not backed by enough science. There is good science present and underway for CBD. There are over 400 different cannabis studies. We know there are tremendous benefits and the World Health Organization touts that CBD is useful as treatment for a huge number of medical conditions. But all the science is preclinical data so far. We cannot make any medical claims, but the science has shown promise and we hope and expect quite frankly that with time and billions of dollars of, in funding, it will translate into good medical science. Number two, you must pay to play when it comes to CBD. Most of the questions that I get about taking CBD are product related. This is because it's confusing and not yet regulated. Fortunately or unfortunately, the average cost of a high quality, full spectrum product should be no less than around 10 cents per milligram. Do the math. If you take 50 milligrams per day, which is a good low average, and multiply that by 10 cents, it should cost you roughly $5 per day to take CBD, give or take. Multiply that by 30 days in a month, and you have an average cost of $150 per month, and a reasonable range could be roughly $120 to $190 per month at 50 milligrams. Anything less is going to also be less effective, at least by today's standards. I know, it's expensive, and it's probably why many will continue to lean on a polypharmacy approach to health because that is what the health insurance will cover and pharmaceuticals have the giant budget needed for the appropriate clinical data. Number three, request a certificate of analysis, a COA, for the CBD product you buy. 70% of top selling CBD products were highly contaminated, according to a study from research firm Ellipse Analytics. The cannabis plant, as we know it now, has been shaped by humanity. We don't know what is the plant's original constitution. Cultivation has been widely oppressed, and so now we have counterfeit cannabis on the market, knockoff products, even with legalization. This COA test certificate ensures the level of cannabinoids present and the absence of heavy metals, toxins, and artificial flavorings. That's not medicine. Look for a clean profile. If you don't have those test results, you don't know what you're taking. If the dispensary or website you're buying from says it doesn't have that information, keep looking until another retailer can provide it. Number four, it's very important to know this about the dosing and onset of results from CBD. Be patient. Be patient and titrate up on your dosing after starting low. Let me explain. Start a full spectrum CBD product at the rate of one to two milligrams per 10 pounds of body weight. A 150 pound person should start at 15 to 30 milligrams of CBD and then increase one half milligram per 10 pounds until you feel good. So a 150 pound person would add six milligrams daily or weekly. And be patient. Every body responds differently to CBD. Some quite quickly, others take some time. I, for example, have noticed that pain and inflammation seem to take more time to respond in an apparent manner, but the benefits related to mood and energy and anxiety, those can be felt sooner. For example, my neck injury and the associated pain and inflammation took almost two full months of CBD, 50 milligrams or more daily before I began to feel better. But I have not since felt the pain that I dealt with daily for 13 years prior, and that was four years ago. Number five, lower doses tend to be uplifting and stimulating. Higher doses tend to be more sedating. I take my high dose of full spectrum CBD at night. It helps me sleep. 
Number six, CBD should be taken outside of a two to four hour window of taking blood thinners, seizure meds, or antibiotics. This is because CBD inhibits or increases the breakdown of medicine in the liver. Number seven, typically practitioners report no issues with drug interactions. There are generally no concerns here. There are with THC because THC is more stimulating to the high concentration of receptors in the central nervous system. Which brings me to number eight. Let me be the first to tell you that there has never been a single reported death related to CBD or CBD overdose in history. Approximately 400,000 people die every year from cigarettes, 85,000 people every year from alcohol, 32,000 from prescription drugs, 7,600 from aspirin, and 100 people die every year from peanuts but zero reported deaths from marijuana, let alone CBD. Number nine, full spectrum CBD products are optimal. You can eat it, ingest it, vape it, smoke it, or apply it as you like. But for optimal long-term health benefits, you should ingest it and in a pure full spectrum oil form. You can add milligrams of CBD with other consumption methods, but if you want to find out what effect CBD can have on you, start and finish with a good dose of ingestible oil. Full spectrum just means that all of the cannabinoids from the whole plant have been carefully captured in the extraction process and there's no more than 0.3% THC present. That's the legal limit. We know that full spectrum is more beneficial than consuming the breakdown of plant components such as CBD isolate or just THC. And number 10, hemp seed oil is not CBD, it's food. It's a code word that suggests CBD so that the product can get around the rules, which isn't cool because people are sick and looking for help. The buzzwords that you want to see listed on your product are cannabis oil or cannabidiol or CBD. That's it for this week. Hopefully some of this was helpful. For the rest of you, stay tuned. I'll be tackling a ton of other topics, interviews with thought leaders and medical professionals, and simplifying a labyrinth of info. If you have questions or a topic you'd like me to address, leave it in the comments below and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And be sure to hit the subscribe button here. Share this, tell your parents. And as always, you'll want to consult a medical cannabis provider. I'm a certified CBD consultant. I have 18 years experience in the medical industry, but I do not give medical advice, make medical claims, and will not consult on matters relating to cancer or seizures. Bye.